Yo. Matt Reyes, you know the name of the motherfucking show. You say it. Yo, say it. Yo, say it. Very important podcast. The most important podcast, ladies and gentlemen, if I do say so myself, and who is the best person to pump you up to give you some gas besides yourself? You should be your biggest critic. You should be your biggest supporter. It's all about you, baby. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. It's Saturday and I'm indoors. Why? I should be outside, right? Maybe. Huh? You know, I'm, 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 I'm keeping myself indoors because I know what will happen. I'll go outside and I'll drink a lot of alcohol. And I don't believe in I'm, I'm an alcoholic. I don't, I don't think that's my problem. My problem is I have a fucking issue spending money. I spend money. Like there's something fucking wrong with me. That like there's something fucking wrong with me. Ah, ah. I talked about it in a, like previous podcasts where I think the future is going to be um, just the way that the human psychology is developing. Was like guys want to be girls, girls want to be guys. People have different pronouns, and you know the the invent of surgeries that allow people to actually transition their genders. I think that's just going to increase because it's psychology of humanity. We're never satisfied. We get used to something and we want more freedoms. Even if they're non-fucking existent, we're going to pull them out of fucking la-la land. I want to be something else. I want to be something else. I think this is going to continue evolving. So I believe in a future where people splice their genetics and it's going to be like a whole bunch of animorphs. You know, half cat people, half dog people, Right? Um, and when that comes about, I'm going to be very critical of it, but I might take advantage of that technology. Cause I think like, could, could I go and splice myself with like a different race or ethnicity, right? Just to be a little bit more conscientious. Like I just get like a couple drops of Jew blood in me so I can, I learn how to budget because <laughs> I don't know how to save my money. Oh. Um, <laughs> I think this is why people like uh, did breeding back in the day. It probably still exists to a certain extent, but like they would go and seek out a. Th- this probably still is like the nature of human beings. When people fuck each other, there is a sexual attraction, but the reality of a sexual attraction is looking for advantageous genetics so that you can create a human being. That is essentially half you and half something that you may be missing, something that is better than the qualities that you don't have. And that's how you create like a stronger human being. Right. Um, I think that's what people, you know. What I mean? And we won't need to do that in the future. You could just fucking. How much would that cost, though? Like, I, I won't go to a fucking splicing clinic. I just want like a whatever percentage of. Hebrew that is going to allow me to learn how to budget. Please, how much? Give me a good deal. That's the whole fucking point. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You think God gave up on us already? <laughs> God would have to have one hell of fucking patience to be able to not give up on us by now. Sitting there wherever he is like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What the fuck are you guys doing? Just learn how to budget. You want to go to a fucking mad scientist to give you Jew blood? What am I even saying? What am I even saying? What am I even saying, man? Recording cut off, but that happens. And uh, what was I talking about? It was probably like a sign from above. God was like, maybe don't request Jew blood. That's maybe... America, me. You know what a force I would be to reckon with if I knew how to budget? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. Um, I always do like to believe in, like, universal balance and things like that. But is that real? Is it? Because I think of myself, I have so many advantageous qualities. And then I have, like, a couple that are very debilitating. You know? <laughs> I can't read good. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God.
I really try to like anytime I get to a place and I think everybody should do this to a certain degree when you get to a place of not self-doubt, but maybe identifying qualities about yourself that are not the best, your, your weaknesses. You know, when they ask you that question in the interviewing process, like, tell me your greatest weakness. Um, no, how about that? How about I don't fucking tell you something that's going to stop the hiring process? What? <laughs> Come on. But I always get to like, you know, a place when I'm thinking in that mindset of just like Chinese philosophy. You don't know what's coming up next, man. You don't know what's happening. The next things, maybe all of these things lead to something positive. I really do think constant movement, soul solution. Huh? Tattoo that on your fucking ass cheek if you are a female and you like the Nothing Important podcast. Please. Show me it's real. Show me it's real. What? Um, No, no, I, I, I do believe that. I do believe that. I think if you just keep on moving, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. Oh, I can just keep on pushing, man. One more day, one step in front of the other. Just keep on going, baby. Keep on going. Ninety, you know what the reality of it is? Is that ninety percent of the problems that we experience in life are created by other people. It's not real issues. It's not. It's not. Nature has a uh, a subset of. Uh, life fucks that it will hand out to you. You know, what I mean? the reality of nature, just us existing and interacting with the planet and other life forms beside human beings on the planet, that has its own fuckery. You know, the, all the bullshit that life is going to give you. But in this modern reality, most of the problems we run into, negativities, objections, forces that try to stop you from being yourself or doing what you're doing, it's all just other people. It's all other people. And if you could just fucking not give a shit about other people, it's fucking brilliant. It's not going to necessarily make things easier, but you don't exist in the negativity. Because why should you? Why should you? Everybody be free. I want everybody to be free. Martin Luther Jesus, everybody's free. Everybody. Um... You know, that's a po- more positive mindset. Just stop worrying. You know, you don't have to go and seek out a mad scientist and get you blood, possibly. But isn't that unfair, though? Like, cultures that have positive stereotypes. That's fucking, you know. It's not fair. That's not fair. I don't like that because I, I'm Puerto Rican. We have our own stereotypes. What are Puerto Rican stereotypes? Um, one of the, the one in particular that I hate is that Puerto Ricans are lazy because that's not true. But what's worse than that is that I'm lazy (laughs) and I just happen to be Puerto Rican. If I was something else, I'd still be me, you know, (laughs) it's like the, the, the mental revelation that black is not a monolith and that people who may have African descent, that's no bearing on their individual personality. It's the same thing applies for every ethnicity and race. There is a like a, a level of influence that you get from the way that you were raised or your racial experience, ethnic experience. But that doesn't it's not you. It's not who you are as an individual. And I'm stuck in this like fucking catch twenty two of being a bit lazy but also being Puerto Rican, you know? Which both of those things individually I enjoy. <laughs> That's the fucked up thing about it. It's just I got to live with being a reinforcement of a very ugly stereotype. It's not, you know. It's like you ever hear the, the <laughs> they have this horrible stereotype. It's just racism. It's just racism. It's not true. But the stereotype for like black women being angry. But what if you're a black woman and you just happen to be an angry person? <laughs> That must fucking suck. You know? It's like all black guys who have little dicks. That has to be hell. Because of, <laughs> of the expectation. That has to be fucking suffering. You know? I don't know. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? 
What am I talking about? I'm talking about stereotypes. I'm talking about stereotypes. I'm talking about stereotypes. I'm talking about stereotypes. It's true, man. It's true. Like certain cultures. Who who creates that shit too? Who creates stereotypes? Stereotypes, is that all racism? Or is there some truth to it? Because I know for a fact Puerto Ricans are not lazy. Where does that... I'm going to Google that. Where does that... Does that come from? Uh, Let's see. We're going to Google. Who? She's bright. Bright. It's too bright. Uh, Where does the stereotype... That Puerto Ricans are lazy come from. Uh, why are Puerto Ricans such lazy people? Take it easy. Uh, let's just click it and see. <laughs> it's a picture of a guy sleeping on uh, the branch of a tree. Hilarious. Uh, Let's begin by acknowledging some top quotes when it comes to describing Puerto Ricans. The drug addled thieves and baby mamas tend to uh, stay near coastal cities to prey on tourism, welfare and Las Playas. That is fucking quality racism. I got to continue an app. I can't even enjoy the rest of that. Fuck you guys. You're not just going to be racist and tease me with your racism. Finish the job. All right, let's go on Quora. Growing up in California when I was 8 to 23, I would get some pretty uninformed questions when my friends learned I was Puerto Rican. Do you all live in huts? Do you have electricity? Uh, Where in New York is Puerto Rico? (laughs) That's good. Uh, Can I see some Puerto Rican money? More recently living in Denver, the comments ranged uh, more to how we're perceived as crazy, aggressive, or overly sexual. So once again, I I don't know if I could consider myself crazy. Definitely not an aggressive human being. I'm pretty passive. Uh, but I am horny and I'm lazy about it. Uh, but, you know, stereotypes are based on ignorance. But if a person asking is actually open minded and curious, then I want to answer their questions. You know, I'm just thinking I, I would think where that stereotype comes from in Puerto Rico. It's described when uh, historically that when Columbus came to the Caribbean islands and met the Tainos, that they were good people, that they did not know of evil. I think maybe the lifestyle of the way that Puerto Ricans lived in um, on the islands, the way that matches up to what is promoted in America, like the need for people to work to support the system of capitalism. If you measure those things two together, that's probably where that perception comes from, that Puerto Ricans are lazy. Uh, which, once again, is not true. But unfortunately, I'm Puerto Rican and I'm a little bit. I don't even want to say I'm lazy. I'm 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 hyperactive when it comes to things that I'm passionate about or motivated by uh, and things that you need to do that you don't want to do. I guess that's where I get a little bit like, eh, eh, eh. but is that a problem? I think that's a question a lot of people have as well. Like, there's different lifestyles, uh, depending on your geography. Oh, I think I just broke a plate. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going to have to pause the recording, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I just, I broke a bowl. Um, Negative spiral. Why? What does it mean? God, tell me, please. Please. I was just talking about stereotypes and my jealousy of cultures, ethnicities, racial backgrounds that have positive stereotypes. Uh, it's not fair. It's a not a fair. It's a not a fair. It's a not a accurate. Why am I doing an Asian accent? Why? Why? Um, Asians are good at math. Huh? Is that true? It mu- That must be a horrible one. Like if you're Asian and you're stupid, that's got to be, which I've not met I know it has to, like, that's one of those stereotypes that's, like, really tough. And I don't know if it's their emphasis on education, their cultural emphasis on education, the worship of education, knowledge, and rigors of academia in Asian culture. 
that makes it probably rare to meet a dumb Chinese. Uh, but you guys didn't know any dumb Asians? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Well, well it has to have, it has to be. It has to be. And how tough that would be. What is life for people who just completely accept what and who they are and just don't give a shit? Is that a good or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing, but society's so complex, man. Thinking about what we were just talking about, like Puerto Rico, the stereotype. Um, obviously, the stereotype of Puerto Ricans being lazy is something that is uh, the concept of victim blaming comes up in my brain. Victim blaming is when somebody is a piece of shit and victimizes another individual. And upon doing so, they kind of seal the deal by convincing the person that they did something wrong to convincing that person that they are to blame. And I think the cultural phenomenon of negative stereotypes is that it's where people make you feel bad for what you are when in all actuality they want to be you or they want your uh, lifestyle. And here's the evidence behind that. American society basically uh, came about by colonization of natives in the Caribbean islands and the mainland of America. And all of that was a game that was played for hundreds and hundreds of years, brutality, murders, genocides, rapings, um, colonization, stealing, um, abuse. It's just a very fucking big bag of tricks that was unleashed over hundreds and hundreds of years. And the purpose of it all that's what's very fucking interesting because what it appears to be is a promotion of an idealism that people should be obsessed and rigorous in participating in capitalism. But the reality is the prize of beating the game, of winning the game of capitalism is to live like a Puerto Rican on the islands. That's, <laughs> that's what the fuck it is. That's what the fuck it is. It was all to build resorts and, you know, isolate certain areas. And we, we identify them as like bubbles of insulated wealth. And if you went and really inspect what people are doing on these islands, these rich people um, that have created these conditions, they're just, you know, very small versions of the natural lifestyle of the natives. People with less clothes on, on beaches, chilling the fuck out. Holy shit, we got conned out of our own thing. Now they're telling us we're lazy. I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy. Who doesn't want to fucking drink, smoke weed, take naps, be in the sunshine? Fuck a lot. Take a dip in the water. Take a nap. I think that that's an interesting thing too. Like who would not be lazy if they were given the opportunity? <laughs> You know, and it, that's in, we have to identify in what context laziness is like if you are a person who uh, skips on the physical maintenance of your body, taking care of yourself physically, and that leads to things that cause you disease or bad conditions of living, living, I think that's actual laziness. But if you're somebody that takes care of themselves and pursues your passion, satisfies the Things that satisfy your soul. Works harder than things that make you feel like yourself. That's not laziness. It's just a lifestyle that's not promoted by capitalism. And then you have to remember again, this is the game. This is the fuckery. Is that when you play the game, you get in the rat race and you win, you would just end up the prize is to be Puerto Rican. That's the fucking prize. That's the fucking prize is to get a, a, a decent tan. And to drink rum on a fucking beach. That's what we were doing. We were doing that. <laughs> we were just fucking doing it. So I don't know. You know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I know. Maybe I have all the answers. Maybe I have all the 
all the answers. All the answers. That's another stereotype, like Jamaicans smoke weed a lot. Um, but who doesn't fucking smoke weed? You know what I mean? <laughs> who doesn't fucking smoke weed? Who doesn't? That's an interesting thing. I never actually looked that up. Where does weed come from? Like, where's the origin of marijuana? Where is... I can't spell marijuana. Marijuana originally from... All right, so it's... Oh, wow, that's interesting. This is paradoxical. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. So cannabis, also known as hemp or marijuana, evolved about 28 million years ago. On the Eastern Tibetan Plateau. So fucking paradoxical. Why is this? We're talking about Tibet. Like the land of the monks. But they don't smoke weed. But what other culture embodies all the qualities of a pothead. Better than somebody who is like stationary for the entirety of their lives. You know? (laughs) Holy shit. It's crazy, right? Asians don't really smoke a lot of... I don't think that's like big in Asian culture, like them smoking a lot of weed. I don't think so. Um, but, you know, that's the, that's the magic of reality. Oh, how interesting is that to you, ladies and gentlemen? Asians smoke more weed because that's your, your nature. If you are somebody from uh, Native America, if you're a native, of, if you have indigenous blood... Do not conform to capitalist pressures. You know, you don't have to be somebody that you're not. You just have to not be homeless. That's all. That's it. That's it. That's been a podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody who continue listening to Nothing Important Podcast, continue listening. Do me a favor. Go on to the Instagram. Nothing Important Podcast on Instagram. Like, post, like, reels. Go over to the X platform. Listen to the Nothing Important Podcast on the X platform. That's El Nada Dada. Go over to the YouTube page, visual content, nothing important podcast on YouTube. Until next time.